Hey guys, how's it going? So, uh, a little while ago I introduced this knife review uh, talking points or checklist basically and one of the talking points I talked about was usage and um, I didn't give a very clear definition of what that meant because this was just an overview type video so I wanted to give a more clear picture of what I mean by that as it's going to pertain to the knife reviews that we're going to be doing in the future going into November and uh, in the indefinite future after that. So um, I wanted to outline four major areas that I think are pertinent areas to talk about uh, knife usage and I also want to talk about the different philosophies and traits that you want in a knife for those different categories of use. For example, a uh, fighting knife you're going to want significantly different things than a collection knife. Um, so I'm going to go through and talk about that. The four categories I want to talk about are combat, woodcraft, everyday carry, and collection. I realize that knives are used for a lot more purposes than that. Those are just the four I'd like to talk about. For example, I realize that many companies make dive knives. I just don't scuba dive, so I won't be talking about them. Um, so that's kind of how that's going to go. First off, I want to start with combat, just because, in a sense, it's the hardest to talk about. Um, I know a lot of people try to pretend like knives aren't viable weapons. I know that sounds ridiculous, but a lot of people do try to do it. And I know the reasons that they try to do it, mainly that people attack knives because they see them as weapons, but I still think that the best way that we can handle that is to recognize that they do have capability as weapons and just try to discuss that maturely. So uh, we will be discussing combat here, and I think it's important to say up front that uh, both Chad and I are untrained when it comes to knife fighting, but it, we can speak from a, a logical pers perspective. Um, having owned many knives that are ostensibly made for fighting, we can uh, do different things with them and try to give you guys a logical look into uh, what the traits that you might want out of those knives are. So when I talk about fighting knives, I'm going to be talking about knives like these two here. Um, so the things that we're going to be looking about if we want to use a knife in the fighting philosophy, if that's the purpose that we purchased the knife for, we're looking for speed of deployment, um, traction, ergonomics, lock strength, uh, the length and reach of the knife, slashing ability, penetration ability, and less than lethal capabilities. Uh, those are a few areas that we'll be looking in. And uh, we will be looking at combat folders. I brought out these two here because these are the most visually apparent that they are fighting knives that I own. Um, so that's the things that we'll be talking about and looking for in fighting knives were outlined there. Next I want to move on to woodcraft knives. I'll just leave these here. Um, again, we are... this one doesn't really have a formal training type thing attached to it, but we are still untrained. Um, there are people on YouTube that are survival experts and we aren't them, but we can, like we have been doing in the fire making video, show you us using them, show you the problems we encountered or the, uh, the lack of problems that we encountered. And from that angle, we can try to give a logical look into whether this knife may be more or less useful in a situation where you're doing expedition-type woodcraft. Um, so for that, we're going to be looking at edge retention. We're going to be looking for full flat grinds. We're going to be looking at size, durability, and corrosion resistance, because if you're using a knife to build your shelter, presumably you're not as in control of whether or not you can keep your knives from rusting or not. Um, so we will be talking about knives. I want to buy an SE or an EC knife, and uh, we'll be talking about other knives and tools for woodcraft, fire making, stuff like that, because it is something that I'm personally interested in. Now moving on to everyday carry type knives. I'm going to move these out of the way. This is sort of better. It's more the only area I can really claim I've got any experience in. Um, I've been carrying knives on my person since I was maybe six years old. I got these two knives. I think both were given me on vacation. Um, so I, I do have a larger body of experience and more of the knives that I have and more of the use that I get out of those knives is EDC type tasks. And when I think of EDC, I think of having a knife that you can carry and the most work it would ever really see is really heavy cardboard cutting and that would be strange. Um, however, I do think it's important me being 16, I don't have a concealed carry permit. I think it is important to talk about EDC knives as a secondary defensive solution. So for example, I don't always have this thing on me. I never have this thing on me because it's big and heavy and it would scare people. However, uh, 
something like this is much more plausible to carry in my pocket. So um, the knives for EDC, the things we'll be looking at are uh, size, secondary defensive capability, like I talked about, size for convenience, secondary defensive capability for secondary defensive capability, the ergonomics of the knife, edge retention, and clip design. Clip design becomes more important with an everyday carry type knife. Um, obviously we'll be looking at things like uh, speed of deployment of the knife and general quality as well, perhaps more so than in the combat and woodcraft sense. Um, so more of the knives that we'll be reviewing from the EDC angle. Um, and I think it's important to point out that with the EDC knives we will be talking a lot about the secondary combat, so we will go into uh, traction, lock strength, length, um, slashing penetration, and on some knives less than lethal capability. So you can expect to see all that in an EDC review. I realize some people won't like that, but I do try to be realistic. And um, that is one philosophy that I see these knives being used in, seeing as I can't carry a firearm. So uh, a lot of our reviews will be coming from that angle there. And the last one, as I said, is collection. And from an angle, everything's collection, and from another angle, very little is collection. So what I consider buying a knife for collection is that the value is pretty subjective because uh, you're mainly buying this knife for the appearance. I realize I'm not defining everybody's view on collection, I'm just defining mine. If I'm going to call it a collection knife, I'm going to buy it because of how it looks or because it's an exclusive type thing. Um, so that'll be more the driving force than me wanting a functional knife like the ones that you've seen thus far. So the only two knives I can really claim that I bought out of a direct impulse to collect are, um, one second, uh, Spidey Velotin and the CRKT Nurk Die. Um, so in that aspect, I think collection has more to do with uh, the semi-production customs and just custom knives in their own right. Um, that's what I think of more when it comes to collection. You could easily make the argument that I own this knife for collection as much as I do these two, and you are basically right if you make that argument. Um, where I'll be talking about more collection value for these two. So I think for collection knives, it's almost entirely appearance-based, but it's much better if it's functional. Again, if it's a limited run of knives, Microtech, Protec, something like that, even better. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my view on collection. That's what I'll be talking about collection-wise. So that's kind of where we're going to be coming from on the usage part of these talking point, outline, review things. Uh, some of these other points will get their own clarification videos. I know we're going to do an edge retention, or not an edge retention, an asymmetric edge grind uh, video that'll be in here in the steel retention and sharpening category to kind of talk about what we want there and... Um, our views on stuff like that. Maybe as we go through we'll make more videos. I think the rest are pretty um, self-explanatory. I may want to do a presentation video. Um, I don't know. I think... I, think, I don't think anything. I um, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of clarifies, uh, sets a precedent for the reviews that we're going to be doing here in the near future. Um, so yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more of the same.